You're listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. Each week, your host, Polly Requa, interviews veterinarians and individuals in the pet industry from across the nation answering pet questions. Bark and Wag podcast is produced weekly for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at BarkandWag.com under the podcast tab. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com. Please remember to subscribe to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Bark and Wag is dedicated to protecting our dogs through advocacy, education, and supporting like-minded dog lovers by selling custom pet products. Bark and Wag is excited to announce our new partnership with a Colorado hemp farm to produce a line of CBD products for your pets. Bark and Wag has CBD pet tincture available in 300, 750, 1200, and 2400 milligrams. Bark and Wag CBD is pet safe, no THC, it's made in the USA, and is CO2 extracted. Please check out Bark and Wag's website, BarkinWag.com, that is B-A-R-K, the letter N, W-A-G.com, to see our line of CBD and awesome merchandise. We love pooch ideas for podcasts and merchandise, so anytime send an email to Polly at BarkinWag.com with your suggestions. Welcome to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. I'm your host, Polly Requa. Today, we're talking to Dr. Laura Brown, owner of Green Tree Animal Hospital in Libertyville, Illinois. Welcome, Dr. Brown. Hi, Polly. People seem to love the tips, and so I wanted to have you give tips on how do you know your dog has an ear infection? Okay. Most common sign is shaking their head all of a sudden, a lot, not just like their normal, like, shake it off kind of thing, but... Constant reoccurring ear shaking, flapping their ears, scratching with their foot, digging in there, um, putting their head on the ground sideways and rubbing the sore ear on the ground. And then, you know, or sometimes people are like to rub their dog's ears and then all of a sudden they're, they yelp when you rub them too much and if they're used to that. And then the biggest thing for owners, they need to pick up the ear flap if they have a flappy ear dog and look in there. Usually an ear infection smelly. And the ear tissue's red, inflamed, and there's usually a decent amount of some sort of volume of discharge, dark brown, blackish, gooey, creamy, pussy stuff. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know the shaking of the head. And then usually when, you know, usually my dogs, they don't have any redness, but as soon as the doctor looks down deeper there's some type of yeast yeah so the ear dog's ear canals are really lots longer than people's and they go down and take a 45 degree turn before they get to the eardrum so there is a big amount of canal that you can't see by just flipping up the ear so if you don't see anything when you flip up the ear but the dog's still pretty uncomfortable shaking a ton scratching really bad ear infections. Sometimes they'll walk around with their head tilted to the side that hurts. Um, Then they need to go in. And um, dogs classically get otitis externa, which is just the outer part of their ear ear canal. So similar to like swimmer's ear in people. They don't, they can get the um, kind of ear infections that little kids get that's behind the eardrum, but it's not very common. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else they need to know? You know, some people are with floppy-eared labs and goldens and hairy-eared dogs. I will say one thing about some people are used to cleaning their dog's ears and you need to use a product that's made for ears. The second thing is if your dog likes to swim, they're going to be prone to it because getting water down in there does not, it's such a long canal, it sits down there and then it's a dark, moist environment and that's when yeast likes to grow. And the third thing is nowadays we have so many doodles, you know, some sort of somebody bred with a standard poodle or a poodle to help prevent shedding that those dogs grow hair in their ears. And that's, yeah, the benefit of having a doodle is they don't shed, but the disadvantage is they don't shed. And so they have the kind of hair, their breed, those are the breeds that grow hair down in their ear canals you know, and, and around their feet. That's why they have to go to the groomer. You know, they have to get a haircut because their hair just gets curlier and curlier and bigger and bigger, but it doesn't shed. So ear, ear canals that are growing hair in there 
need to have the hair removed because the hair just traps the bacteria, the all the wax and any moisture in there and that just leaves things sit there and that's what lets the yeast and the bacteria go crazy. Okay. So okay. some of it's a maintenance thing, like a routine. Everybody should clean their dog's ears or take their doodles to the groomer on a regular basis. And then other dogs are prone to ear infections because they have food allergies um, or allergies in general. So they might be itchy on the rest of their body too, um, or they may be hypothyroid. Those are the three biggies about why dogs get reoccurring ear infections, allergies, hypothyroid disease, allergies. <laughs> okay. And then I do know um, if your dog is a swimmer, the vet will just give you medicine to put in the dog's ears after swimming. I mean, so I, I do that. Yeah. What we try to do is give you ear cleaner that's going to help dry out the ear canals so the water doesn't sit in there. Um, sometimes redoing medicine is sort of like antibiotics. The more you use the same medication, sometimes the the bugs get resistant to the treatment and it does and it stops working as good as it used to. So those swimmers, the best thing to do is use an ear cleaner that will help dry out the ears after swimming. Okay, great. Well, thank you for all the tips and uh, we look forward to having you back. Ditto. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag's 15 minute vet talk. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, www.barkandwag.com, to your friends and other pet owners. Have a pressing question for a veterinarian? Ask your question at barkandwag.com under the podcast tab. This has been a KFR production. Join us next time for another edition of Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk.